Hi, and thanks for joining me again. This is the Renegade Mathematician. And uh, in this video, we're going to discuss the cofactor expansion theorem. In the last video, we defined the cofactors and minors. And in this video, we're going to <clears throat> we're going to prove a very important theorem um, involving determinants and cofactors. And it's going to be a really useful tool in calculating determinants, at least by hand, unless you're you know, using some sort, of, some sort of computer system. It's, in my opinion, the best way. But here we go. Here's the cofactor expansion theorem. Let D be a determinant, then for all K, or really for any K in the set 1 through N, that is, pick your K. The determinant is equal to the sum or rather this particular linear combination of the cofactors, right? So you choose k, you choose a column, and by the way this theorem obviously applies to rows too, I shouldn't have to mention it, but um, pick a column and then you can calculate the determinant by simply calculating the cofactors and and multiplying them by the corresponding entries in the matrix and then adding them up. So it is a linear combination of the cofactors. Why is that useful? Um, well, if you recall in the previous video, the um, you get the cofactor, or rather you get the minor, but you know by you get the cofactor by deleting a row and a column. So if for example you have a three by three matrix that you want to calculate the determinant of um, this will enable you to instead calculate the determinant of a series of 2x2 two two matrix matrices. What's easier? Well, there's a shortcut for 2x2 two two matrices, so obviously you'd rather calculate the smaller determinant. Furthermore, if you have a 4x4 four four matrix, do you want to calculate the determinant by the definition, or would you rather use cofactors? Then you have a bunch of 3x3 three three matrices that you need to calculate the determinant of. Oh, but then you can apply the method of um, the cofactor expansion theorem again to each of those. And then you have 2x2 two two matrices. So you can see how useful this could be. Um, but uh, here's the proof. OK, fix k, or choose k uh, in the set 1 through n. Just choose a column. By definition, D is equal to that. That's just the definition of a matrix. Uh, not a matrix, a uh, determinant. OK, gather all terms in this sum for which alpha of k, because you chose k, for which alpha of k is equal to 1. OK, and factor out a sub alpha k k, which in this case, because a alpha, sub k, alpha of k is 1, um, it's actually just a sub 1 k. So gather those terms to uh, to obtain the term. Okay, so gather those terms and factor out uh, a sub 1k to obtain the term a sub 1k times, you know, the rest of all those terms that you, uh, the terms that you gathered. Now bear in mind that that summation is not the determinant. That is a sum of all the terms that we've gathered, for which alpha of k is equal to one. So the determinant is going to, going to have a lot of terms. Not all of them is going to have um, a sub 1k in it. But we're going to gather the ones that do have a sub 1k in it. And factor a sub 1k out. Der. And uh, notice that we have factored a sub 1k out, right? Uh, there's uh, a sub alpha k minus 1, k minus 1. And then there's next, it's a sub alpha of k plus 1 k plus 1. So what should be in the middle there is a sub alpha k k, but we factored it out, remember. Okay, since 1 is in the kth position, it will require k minus 1 adjacent transpositions to move it to the first position. Okay, so just note where it is. Thus moving 1 to the first position yields uh, a sub 1k, and then you have negative 1 to the k minus 1 power, um, and the reason for that is because we've performed k minus 1 transpositions. Remember, every time you do an adjacent transposition, you change the parity. Um, so, that's why. And um, also, 
note that we've actually moved one. So one dip here there in the kth position. We moved it to the first position, which changed the parity, k minus one times. That's why we have the negative one to the k minus one power out there. Okay, we've done that. Okay, and um, all right, moving on. Now there are no numbers after one that are less than one, right? Notice that, right? One is the smallest of them. And one now contributes no inversions to the permutation. Remember the number of inversions in a permutation is the number of numbers that come after um, that are um, smaller, right? So if you look at one, what comes after it that's smaller than one? None. One's the smallest one. So uh, having one in the first position now contributes no inversions to the permutation. It's where it should be. Hence, removing one from the permutation yields a sub 1k negative 1 to the k minus 1 power times the rest of it. And note that I've removed the one. And it hasn't affected it at all because one being in the first position doesn't add any inversions to it at all, right? It contributes nothing uh, to the number of inversions that are in the permutation. So once I moved it to the front, I change, sure, I change the parity, k minus one times, but once it's in the front, it doesn't do anything anymore, right? I may as well, or I can, simply just leave it off. And I did. So, moving on. Since negative one to the k minus one power is equal to negative one to the k plus one power, right? Um, then we have a sub 1k times negative 1 to the k plus 1 power times the rest of it that hasn't changed at all. And just note, you know, I've changed k minus 1 to k plus 1 because I can. Um, the reason for that is that now, by definition of cofactors, this equals a sub 1k and capital A, the cofactor, capital A sub 1k. All right, so now what do we have? Well, now we have the determinant d is equal to a sub 1k times capital, the cofactor, a sub 1k plus r1, where r1 consists of the remaining terms of d for which alpha of k does not equal 1. So r1 is just the rest of the stuff that we haven't dealt with in the determinant yet. We just dealt with the terms that had a sub 1k in it, and the rest of them we're, we'll deal with presently, okay? Okay, so in a similar fashion, we may gather uh, terms of R1 for which alpha of k is equal to 2 and factor out a sub 2k to obtain the term a sub 2k times capital A sub 2k. Now, hmm, I'm being a little lazy here in that I'm not showing you the process by which you can do that. It's virtually the same as how we got um, the a sub 1k, capital A sub 1k. Um, the only difference is, is that um, when you take 2 out of the permutation, you are in fact removing an inversion. Um, however, um, I think it's clear that you can do that, so I'm not going to bother. Um, plus, we're going to do the last one anyway, so you'll see you'll see how it works once we get to the end. So this yields the determinant equals lowercase a sub 1k times capital A sub 1k plus lowercase a sub 2k times capital A sub 2k plus R2, where R2 consists of the remaining terms of D for which alpha of k does not equal either 1 or 2. So it's got to be 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. Okay, so we'll note that. That's where we're at here. Just keep it a tally. We may continue in this fashion until finally we may gather all terms of Rn minus 1. So looking down the road, we keep doing it until we get to R sub minus n minus 1, for which alpha of k is equal to n. Here, R sub n minus 1 consists of the terms of d for which alpha of k is not 1, 2, 3, or any of them all the way down to n minus 1. Okay. After this step there will be no more such steps because we will have exhausted the set 1 through n and r sub n 
will consist of all terms for which alpha of k is not equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to n. That is, there will be no remaining terms. There's nothing left after that. Okay, so here's the last step. Okay. So we're on the last step here. By gathering all terms of r sub n minus 1 for which alpha of k is equal to n and factoring out alpha uh, a sub alpha of k k which in this case is just a sub n k right we obtain the term a sub n k times the rest of it just like what you saw in the first step uh, only difference is it's it's a sub n k instead of a sub 1 k all right and notice that a sub n k is not in that uh, we factored it we actually have factored it out of that sum since n occupies the kth position, we may perform k minus 1 adjacent transpositions to obtain a sub n k times negative 1 to the k minus 1. So it's, al it's already almost exactly the same. Okay. And you do want to note that um, we have moved n from the kth position to the first position. Okay. All right, so now n occupies the first position. Now here's where it gets a little different than the first time. Now there are n minus 1 numbers after n that are less than n. Hence, removing n from the permutation removes n minus 1 inversions from the permutation. Okay, this yields a sub n k times negative 1 to the k minus 1 times negative 1 to the n minus 1 because once we remove it, we change, we change the parity n minus 1 times. Okay. And then times the rest of the, the rest of the junk. And um, and w this yields a sub n k uh, times negative 1 to the n plus k times the rest of the term times the terms that we've um, gathered together here. Um, now you may have caught that wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Um, you see where I got this from here. Uh, how did I get negative 1 to the n plus k? Well, I got it from, you know, uh, combining the negative 1 to the k minus 1 and the negative 1 to the n minus 1. But wait a sec, wouldn't that be negative 1 to the n plus k minus 2? Why, yes, it would. Uh, but negative 1 to the n, uh, n plus k is the same. It's the same. Okay. By definition of cofactors, this equals lowercase a, a sub nk times the cofactor capital A sub nk. Thus the determinant is equal to, well, what we set out to show, right? One by one we go through and we gather terms, factor out the little a's, right? And we eventually end up in, um, with this here, right? That the determinant is a linear combination of those cofactors and QED. We're done. Okay, so there's the cofactor expansion theorem proved. And um, in the next video, we'll go over um, we'll go over how to actually perform calculations using um, cofactors and also some other little minor properties that make computing determinants easier than they otherwise would be. Um, but that's um, that's for the next video. See you next time.